Welcome back to the show, everybody. We're out at the tractor show very early in the morning. Sun's kind of in the uh, magic eyeball at the moment. But you know how I love the original Survivor type tractors? Well, I've got a very good one to show you today. So we've got a dump wagon. Yep, that's neat. But it's what is on front of the dump wagon. So we've got an old Caterpillar 30, all right? And like I said, original Survivor, the more you look at this one, the more you see. So we'll get a read on the serial number first so we know exactly what we're looking at. So here is um, the original uh, instructions for shifting the transmission, shift pattern tag, all of that. Uh, general instruction plate down here. We have an S8809. So that S means this is a San Leandro, California built 30. If that was a PS, that would have been a Peoria tractor. So this one came from San Leandro. That's a bit odd for this part of the world. Usually they're all the PS style 30s, but um, very much original finish yet. You can even see some of the old uh, Caterpillar lettering left intact on the side of the tank. Round fender tank, riveted, soldered, construction very very neat we've got the original style cap up there yet now undercarriage on this very stand up i would i would put this as a rather low hour 30 all right and we've got the factory attachment bolt on like um street shoes street plates all right and these were just a flat steel plate that came up over the top of the grouser and what they did was they alternated them every other one so this shoe has a plate this shoe is a grouser this shoe is a plate this shoe is a grouser and of course we doubled them up right here because of the count of the track links and track pads you would either have to have two right next to one another or a double space without them so that's it's best to just double them up but this way you were more versatile to uh, operate on hard packed or paved surfaces because every other one would give you enough to keep that grouser from biting or if you would wander into some softer looser ground well you'd still have grousers that could pick up some material give you some grip but usually these are completely worn through there's holes in them or they're all bashed in these have not seen a lot of action they're still flat on the tops take a look at the other side same way and of course they just utilize these um, attachment holes that are factory provided in each track pad so very very good condition all around there yet we've got all of the track tin in place that's usually gone these ones that are after the sprocket and we have the ones that cover the bulk of the top of the track frame this one has the footstep intact yet if you look down here at the side of the track frame down in here you can still see some old lettering that says Carnegie USA we've got some original gray paint intact on some of the uh, coils of the recoil spring out here once again everything undercarriage wise looks very very good from sprockets to track links to carrier rollers to idlers even to bottom rollers down there hard to see much for wear on anything in here that's some of the original leather that was put around where that mainspring goes onto the track frame. To find original leather in place there just, just doesn't happen. So yeah, like I said, the more we look at it, the more interesting it is. All the fenders, I mean, look how clean that, it, that is. Seat box, clean. Even the front edge is clean, um, just. It's amazing the condition of this tractor. See how sharp the serrations are on that brake pedal yet? Just a little bit of wear on this edge. This one, same way. It's got the uh, early style throttle on it yet because we've got this little brass detent lever right here. Uh, the later ones went to just more of a flat piece of steel like the rest of the um, lever is laminated from. But then we got brass lever, a little pull rod down to the pivot return spring on the other side. Look at how sharp all of the quadrant teeth are yet. I don't think I've ever seen any that are that, that, are that sharp. Pulls on this cable, goes up through that tube, finds its way up in the governor up there. We've got the uh, Eisman style magneto cover. It's even got the original switch key 
in there yet. And of course the tube feeds up here to where the spark plugs would be and wires. Now don't do this unless you know the owner or you're pretty sure you can pin it all on Kyle Christ from YouTube. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna bust into here real quick. I wanna show you all what's underneath. We've even got, you can still read the firing order, one, two, four, three, in that tin cover. And original style silfen oil pressure gauge up there. So there's the last of our wing nuts. Take that tin cover off. These look to be original spark plug wires yet. They have the round insulation sheaths around them. We don't have any rubber boots out on the end, just the, just the terminal ends. To find anything that is still this intact just doesn't happen. Show you another interesting bit of history. I have to believe the seat cushion is all original. The old coil springs, all the burlap up inside, all the wood is still solid. Amazing. Working up farther forward now, this is an attachment that I have personally never seen with my own eyes, all right? So we have a drive with a generator. Wires go up to some headlights. These are the uh, guide lights, early style, mesh on the front. But this generator and drive setup is really interesting. So we've got a tag on the side, and it says caution, do not shift generator with engine running. And they even gave you a serial number stamping provision, NO dot, and they didn't stamp any numbers, but the reason they talk about shifting the generator, okay? So this is an in or out type generator drive. We have this pinch bolt right here. Generator is a machined housing, fits inside, and here is a peg, and you can see there's a rearward slot and then a, a channel and a forward slot. It's in the rearward slot right now. So what you would do is loosen this pinch bolt slide this generator to the rear, engage that notch in the rearward slot, and tighten the bolt back down. What that does, it pulls the generator and drive gear back and unmeshes it from the timing gear beneath the front cover. So then when you would shift it in, you'd shut the engine off, of course, loosen that pinch bolt, rotate it out of that notch, slide the peg up the track, pop it into the forward notch, tighten that pinch bolt back down, and now your, your generator is meshed into your gear train so that it will spin. We've got this little tapered shaft on the back. At one point in time, there was a knob back here that would help you to dance that gear into mesh if the teeth happen to be stacked on top of one another. And you could make it all work. Um, in or out shiftable generator, just amazing. So working down below, we have a belly pan in place. Front of the grill, very nice. Hand crank, very nice. I have to believe that's the original leather strap for the crank. We've got the proper cast iron radiator cap up top. Of course, the early wavy, almost cartoonish caterpillar font. Air cleaner. I don't know how it sticks out down here and never gets a dent. Um, this is the original Vortox Pomona air cleaner and just excellent shape. Looks like it's got a brass top on it. All soldered to the tin housing. Comes over here, elbows up. We have, this looks like a centrifugal style pre-cleaner. So we have all these fins, these slats, that are punched to direct the incoming air and start it to swirl. And once it swirls inside this air cleaner, the heavier pieces of dirt will be flung out against the inside of the wall here, and they'll fall out that gap on the bottom before they even enter into the air cleaner. Very, very hard to find piece right there. And edit after the fact, I just learned, there's also a fan down inside of there. I don't know if you're gonna see it, but there's a fan that spins. Also helps to pull all that debris out of that pre-cleaner. So then after it's cleaned, elbows out the top, goes on into the correct brass Ensign carburetor. It's got the Ensign fuel pre-cleaner slash strainer on it. It's fed from the tank, drop tube, perfect shape, intake manifold, perfect shape. We've still got some original gray paint left on that heating jacket. Heat box, excellent condition, stainless steel shaft, comes out to the original heat control lever. Exhaust manifold, perfect condition. We got some priming cups up top. 
We've also got the uh, decompressor uh, petcocks on the side, all joined together with that rod. Here's the crankcase breather. Caterpillar Tractor Company. Brass tag on that. Looks like it's even soldered. They didn't even rivet it. Got a couple of um, uh, nubs down here to help you twist that off. I suppose if you had to fill oil or clean the breather, what have you. Even the brake lock teeth. Everything is just sharp on it yet. Just hasn't been used. Leather boot intact on the mainspring over on this side as well. All the track tin in place. Just excellent. And then we get around to the back. Oh, this is the not so original part, but it's still cool as all can be. BG hydraulic pump feeds a BG control unit with a BG tank. Even the little top breather's got BG on it. <laughs> so control lever goes up top. Per our conversation yesterday, that used to be a Caterpillar D2 steering clutch lever, but they're in such abundance that we made it fit. <laughs> so at the back back here, we've got the, uh, the higher low draw bar hitch. Once again, a special factory attachment. All around very, very stand up original condition tractor i would not change a thing so i hope you all enjoyed the walk around very very interesting piece of history thanks for watching